Guyana is a land of contrasts. Its vast natural treasures have been complemented by its newly discovered oil wealth. But to build a new country, especially from an underdeveloped one, a new attitude is necessary. And Andrew Mendez believes he has just the one. The first thing is, you know, a lot of times I'll go into sawmilling operations, logging operations, timber business, and a lot of sectors in Guyana in terms of even how businesses are run and you try to get to the heart of, okay, why do you do this this way or why do you do things a certain way? Well, the scariest answer for me has always been, it's because we've always done it that way. That's one. And the second thing is I find is that also people make the comment that, you know, well, this is Guyana and that's how it works here. You know, for me, that's consigning ourselves to mediocrity. Mendes inherited a small family business which sold chainsaws and logging tools to the timber industry in the early 1990s. He soon transformed it in size and expanded into logging. He was able to bring change to a business that many thought was impervious to change. The type of blade that we use on the sawmills increases the efficiency. So the blade that we actually use here, our company actually developed that blade profile and then got Woodmizer to make it. And then what happened is they found that it doubled the sharp life and increased production by 50% even in the U.S. So now it's become actually their second most popular selling blade in the U.S. But Mendez's ideas of business profit go beyond financial gains. His innovations are aimed at conservation as much as extraction. He has written a book on logging and a code of practice for the local industry in cooperation with international agencies like the EU Forestry Commission. A lot of people look at economics and the environment as two mutually exclusive domains, when in reality they're actually complementary. Farfan and Mendez implemented a shift in the paradigm. The Guyana Forestry Commission and Guyana as a whole has entered into a European Union forest law enforcement governance and trade. This provides opportunities for Guyanese timber to enter into new markets, particularly in Europe, where higher prices than in the Caribbean and other markets are available. So the kind of initiatives that Andrew is taking on board and is pushing is where the country would like to go. Andrew's company has been able to put the practices that are done by operators throughout Guyana at an international level. But he was constantly searching for opportunities and two came from his family. His father was interested in solar power so he invested in that. And his brother Alex's talents came into play when an opportunity arose to use the family's estate, Dubalé, for agriculture. In April 2005, um, I moved back to the farm and this was because we got an investment from Steinseed. Uh, to do corn and soybean seed, you know, breeding. I actually developed fertilizer mixes, also, you know, trace element mixes. I developed uh, the whole irrigation system. We have 600 miles of drip tape. The operation of the family's estate is more than an international joint venture. It provides opportunities for the residents of the community, mainly women. It has given opportunities for up to 140 people from the community to work on the land. It gives them steady income year on year. You know, they have, um, they pay NIS, so, and they also have private health insurance, so that they, for them and their families. We employ a significant number of women in the operation here. And that sort of fits in with Farfan and Mendez as a whole, in that over 50% of the uh, managers in the company are women. This is the sort of holistic thinking that has led to Mendez's success. And it is what sets him apart from his contemporaries in Guyana. And it really takes a special individual to be able to put their ego aside, to actually reach out to others, and to really accept what they have to say. And I'm sure he processes it. Um, he might speak to multiple people and then figures out, okay, this is what I can depend on, this is what I can use in my decision making, and then move forward. But being able to set aside your ego and, and access what the world has to offer you is something I really wish people would 
pay more attention to and, and borrow it from Andrew. It is this kind of thinking that has made FML and Panthera and Jaguar the only Guyanese companies to be poised to participate in the oil business as significant players rather than pawns. Andrew has been very interesting in that he saw the opportunity going on in Guyana and he realized that the way to do that was a lot different than others. First, he really tried to understand how his business could benefit. When Andrew started, there were no companies working offshore in Guyana. That was what we thought a long stretch would take a while as the center. In about two years, 18 months to two years, they've jumped, they're on the FPSO, they're working offshore. I think that's an accomplishment, not only for Farf and Mendez, it's, it's the fastest we've seen a transformation. This kind of hard, rational approach is rarely combined with compassion and care for human and environmental capital. And the combination in Andrew Mendez makes him a transformational agent in Guyana. We're not selfish in what we do. So we try to help other companies say, you know, by being open with them, come and see what we do, how we do it. Try to get an understanding of why we made certain decisions and why we did things a certain way. When we share amongst each other, we grow learning from each other. For these reasons, Andrew Mendes of Guyana is the Anthony N. Sabga Caribbean Awards for Excellence Laureate in Entrepreneurship for 2020.